We are back with more of What's Now, continuing our focus on cancer. Another devastating diagnosis is bladder cancer. There's been some research and some updates on that front. Let's take a look. Bladder cancer cases are on the rise in this country, and the American Cancer Society predicts more than 83,000 people will be diagnosed in 2021. An educational campaign is helping people to understand the warning signs and symptoms of this disease. May is Bladder Cancer Awareness Month, and to teach us about signs, symptoms, and how to keep your bladder healthy is oncologist Dr. Alicia Morgans. Dr. Morgans, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for the invitation. How common is bladder cancer, and what are the most notable risk factors and symptoms? As you just said, you know, bladder cancer is on the rise, and we expect just in 2021 to have over 83,000 new patients diagnosed with bladder cancer. Importantly, the, the potential exposures that could lead to a diagnosis of bladder cancer are things like cigarette smoking, whether that's firsthand or secondhand smoke. So these are individuals who need to be, I think, at a little heightened awareness that they could experience a complication like bladder cancer. Unfortunately, there isn't an easy blood test or physical exam finding that will tell us that an individual has bladder cancer. And so we as physicians really rely on patients to come to us, no matter how embarrassing the symptoms may be for them to discuss, with things like blood in their urine uh, to, to ensure that we can investigate those things further. Importantly, blood in the urine for men is, is really never really a normal thing, actually for women as well. But for men, this can be a very short-lived or long uh, experience of bleeding. Women can have that too, but anybody should really talk to their doctor. And women, because it's more commonly a urinary tract infection that could cause these bleeding, need to really talk to their doctor if they feel like this urinary tract infection may be different than previous ones, or if they're getting treatment with antibiotics over time and it's really not making their symptoms better. So these recurrent UTIs and any blood in the urine are warning signs that there could be something more going on in the bladder and deserve that conversation with the doctor. Does embarrassment keep people from talking to their health care providers about their symptoms? Absolutely. You know, bleeding in the urine, urinary tract infections, and sometimes things like pelvic pain are really never things that somebody wants to engage in a conversation about. Um, and there are lots of cultural reasons why we don't really just jump to those kinds of conversations with anybody, including our doctors. That's why I'm so proud to partner with the CGen and Estellas team on the YouTube campaign, Let's Target the Tough Stuff, which tries to engage healthcare providers, patients, and caregivers to provide examples of ways that we can ask these questions. And of course, to provide encouragement that no matter how embarrassed we may feel, we have to get over it because asking those questions could save our life if it helps us to diagnose a bladder cancer when it's still in its early curable stage rather than letting it get to a more difficult and challenging stage to treat or to cure. And I want to ask you about let's target the tough stuff and the goal of this program. Absolutely. So this program seeks to really help empower patients with the questions that they need to, to ask their physicians and also to show them that physicians are happy to talk about these issues, no matter how embarrassing a patient may feel that it is. Talking about things like urinary tract infections, blood in the urine, and again, pelvic pain can again save your, your life if this leads to your diagnosis of early stage bladder cancer. It also helps to provide for patients who have a diagnosis of bladder cancer some support to ask the questions that can be more challenging after diagnosis. Things like, well, what is it like to live during chemotherapy if that's what I need for my treatment? Or do I need surgery? Or will I have to leave, live with a bag and after I have my bladder removed? Uh, these are not things that anybody feels comfortable asking, but are certainly things that are important to understand if you are a patient dealing with bladder cancer that requires those kinds of treatments. Finally, there are also conversations and, and discussions by patients and caregivers that help to show that side of the story and to help patients feel confident to ask, again, the questions that they need to ask, particularly when it comes to things like mental health and sexual health concerns that can be embarrassing to ask, of course, in general, and of, especially of our doctors. So the, the goal, I think, is education, empowerment, and really support for patients and their loved ones who are dealing with or may be dealing with bladder cancer. And where can we get more information? 
So this uh, is really highlighted on a YouTube channel called Let's Target the Tough Stuff. So go to YouTube and search up Let's Target the Tough Stuff. You'll see a variety of videos and information there to help support you in your journey. Whether you have bladder cancer or not, it, it really does also help raise awareness for this incredibly important cancer. Thank you so much, Dr. Elisa Morgans, for talking with us today about bladder cancer and helping us target the tough stuff. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for the opportunity.